Hey guys, back with another episode from the garden. One of the most common questions I've been getting for the last six months has been regarding water. I'm not going to mention anyone's name, but you know who you are. Um, yep, yeah, it's a, a tricky subject because everyone has their own experience and I'm going to share mine. I've shared this before back at um, I think August during winter. Yep, even in winter I'm watering. So if you want um, my results and you're in a similar climate, we're talking um, uh, cool to warm uh, fluctuating temperate climate. Yep, Melbourne is all the above. I'm also asked that question often too. What kind of climate are you in? Well, I would say variable temp temperate. That would describe it the best. So, we just had 42 Celsius a couple of days ago. The warmest or the hottest day in spring on record. That's 105. So, 105 Fahrenheit. In spring I don't think even Phoenix Arizona gets to 105 in spring maybe it does I'm not sure but here's the water I've been watering today for two hours just this is the last tree then I go then I go to the beach I'm all done so we do the watering in the morning and we do the beaching in the afternoon and in the evening we settle down and um, wind down and relax that's pretty much our lifestyle here. Um, yep, if you want these results, guys, see this pomelo? It's only five years old or six years old now. Nice shape. I shape all the trees to fit in with their neighbors. There's the orange. And this one that I'm watering is a white sapote. Why am I watering these trees so obsessively? Well, I want growth. I want early growth. Check out this um, persimmon that I'm under. It's loaded. Absolutely loaded with uh, fruit this year. And uh, a few of them will drop because it's uh, overloaded. Look at that. Overloaded. So, water. Water is more important than even feeding. Feeding is important, but water is more important. This is a 10-year-old Fuyu persimmon tree. And they're the results from the watering. I water for about 5 to 10 minutes per tree. Not every day. These are established trees. They don't need watering every day. The established trees I water around... Um, once a week between uh, spring and autumn once a week the established ones established means over five years old like this orange this pomelo that uh, jabuticaba I don't do stone fruit stone fruit doesn't get watered at all that's a ten year old plum tree I haven't watered that in six years back there there's apple trees I haven't watered the apple trees in 12 years okay so we don't water everything anything over 10 years old we don't water at all at all unless there's a drought like it hasn't rained for you know over a month it's a matter of life and death then yeah so this is a jujube six years old that gets watered um, maybe every two weeks between spring and autumn the jujube is pretty much um, hardcore drought proof and back there is the Hass Avocado. And that just got watered. Everything got watered. Just finishing off with the Sue Bell. White Sapote. I watered this tamarind. Australian native tar tamarind. Large leaf. Okay, don't have to, I don't have to water these so much. Okay, we don't have a drought. We get a lot of rain here in spring. It's been raining nicely. But I still water it. Because I wanted to be my jack 
beanstalk tree. And how am I going to do that if I don't water it? Right? And another thing, here in summer, which is in about 10 days, it doesn't rain. The rain stops in our temperate climate in December. And it resumes at the end of March. So yeah, we do have a drought every summer for three months. So the good times are over in about two weeks. No more rain. But I've been watering during this lovely uh, spring wet weather. Still watering. Still watering, guys. Don't have to. It's optional. And like I said, the reason I'm doing it is because I want to push growth. I want these trees to get big. ASAP. ASAP. You don't have to do that. It's optional. Check out the lamb house. It's only been in the ground for... Um, where are we now? A year and a half. I put it in the ground March 2018. It's about a year and a half ago. Look how beautiful it's coming along. Look at that. It's about 2.2 meters tall and 1.8 meters wide. Why is that? Because I've been watering it a lot. A lot. I just flooded it with water. Um, very important to note with these avocados, you need excellent drainage. Not only will you kill the tree, but you'll be probably blaming me. Don't blame me if you kill your avocado from overwatering. They love water. They love to be overwatered. But at the same time, they are very sensitive to root rot. Okay, so first get your soil sorted out where you plant it. Get that sorted out. See that? Get that sorted out before you go gun ho with a with a with a garden hose. That's what I did. Okay? The same with the uh, the Pinkerton. The Pinkerton? I flooded it. I flooded it today and I flooded it two days ago on Thursday and I flooded it two days before that on Tuesday. Look at that. It's coming along beautifully with new leaves. Very slow transition between last year's foliage and the new season. Very slow transition. But surely they're all coming. Look. All the new foliage. And by the way, um, where is it? There was a couple of burnt leaves on here yesterday from the scorcher that we had on Thursday. I think I took them off. Oh, here's one. Look at that. Look at that. <sighs> Scorch. That's 105. Where is it? 105 Fahrenheit. Look at that. Un unprotected from the sun. No shade. Nothing. 42 Celsius. Yeah. Two leaves got burnt. Two leaves. Okay, I found a burnt leaf on the, um, the lamb has also. There you go. Burnt leaf. That's from the scorcher. Also up here. Another burnt leaf. See that? Burnt leaf. I'd rather have this than um, cold weather damage. You know? Like um, negative temperature. Or minus. Here's another one. Yep, there, there's quite a few leaves that got burnt here. Look at this one. Yep. About five or six leaves on the uh, lamb house. Okay, look who else got burnt. The figs. Well, the fig leaves. Yep, they got it too. That's to be expected. So don't be shocked if you get over 35 Celsius. Spring, summer, anytime. That is um, over 100 Fahrenheit.
the sound of drought. Yep. Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Five leaves. This whole tree here lost five leaves. This is the pawpaw, Native American pawpaw, which was in full sun on Thursday when we had the um, um, firestorm, you could say, right? Look at it. Not one leaf was affected and it's only been in the ground for three months. It's a one-year-old tree. In the instructions, it says don't put it in the full sun in, in its first year or two. Really? Well, it was in full sun on Thursday during the 42 Celsius and not one leaf was affected. Not one leaf was affected in its first summer. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I might take that back. Tip. Okay, got a tip burn. Yep, tip burn. Two leaves. That's it. That's the extent of the damage. Okay, not a problem. And the other pawpaw, which is in full shade, mostly full shade, right now it's in sun. <clears throat> it gets uh, morning shade and afternoon sun. That wasn't affected either. Okay, these are babies. Total babies. Year one for the Native American pawpaw. So, how much should you be watering? Well, it depends. Too many variables, guys. Too many variables. I can only share my experience. There's no right or wrong. So long as you can get a feel of your own garden over time, it'll come. Yep, you're going to kill a few trees first. That's how it was for me. And uh, you have to run that experiment too. Of uh, overwatering, underwatering, and um, getting a feel for your own location. I've got mine down pat now. I know what these trees like and what they don't like. But I've been doing the tropical garden for um, 10 years, coming up to 10 years. I started in 2010, and regular temperate um, garden for another eight years. So. 18 years. The thing is, with the um, cold weather fruit trees, you, can, you can't go wrong. You know, apples and cherries and plums. You just can't go wrong with those guys. You plant them and forget about them. Well, the tropical trees don't work like that here. They need too much pampering. In the tropics, they're okay. In the tropics, you plant a mango or a papaya or a star apple and you forget about it, right? Or a sour sop. You can't do that here. If it's like, oh, my little soursop, oh, little soursop, such tender care. Well, uh, we don't have to do that with these guys, with the plums. See this? I've never cared for this tree. Never. Look at it. You think this needs any more care? It's loaded. Every year, this tree is full of fruit, and I never feed it, I never water it, I trim it because it'll go to the other trees. The same with the other plum above it. This one here, the big one, this is 20 years old. No pampering at all. Plant and forget. The same with the apples, the same with the cherry. Look, cherries are coming. Plant and forget. Plant and forget. Can't do that here with mango. Can't do that here with um, what's it called? Star, star fruit. Can't do that here. I only have that luxury with cold weather fruit trees. Plant and forget. Okay, guys. I hope this video helped once again. It's a little hard to answer the question. How much water shall I um, use for my fruit trees? I'm trying. I think this is the third video on that topic. But I'll keep at it. Thanks for watching, put a like if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot guys, see you for the next video.